Well, good evening, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Bluehawk. Last night, we talked about fleeing America, and how simply just packing up and running is, is just not the answer. I myself prepared for six years before leaving the USA in what I thought was a very well-planned, very detailed, you know, I had a plan. I was told for six years by a very advanced, very well-planned media campaign by a major international advertising firm, it turns out, um, an advertising firm that was actually hired and is still being hired by the New Zealand government uh, that only has one goal, to lure high-end professionals to New Zealand to surround or support the fantasy that New Zealand was a wonderful place to live, a wonderful place to, to work, and looking towards a bright future, etc. Where in reality, major international investors go to New Zealand to lose, on a regular basis, millions of dollars every month so that they can offset their capital gains in their real investments in real countries. New Zealand is an international money-losing, money-laundering operation. And the result is that very few people become more and more wealthy, while thousands, well, in the case of New Zealand, millions of people have their lives destroyed. I was one of those people, and four years later, I'm still paying the price. So please, do not just pick up and run. You have to stop, you have to think, you have to ask questions. And then you got to ask more questions. And this is really, really, really important. This is something that I learned, of course, the hard way. Always, always, always listen to what people say. And then watch what they do. That scares the hell out of liars. Now, again, listen to what people say and then watch what they really do. Honest people welcome this. They prefer this. They, they want it. They insist on it. Liars, professional liars, are terrified by this. So the next time you're in a life-changing situation, just say this very simple, very honest phrase. Say it very nicely. I listen to what people say, and then I watch what they do and then sit back and watch the liars scatter. After three months in New Zealand, I knew the truth. But because I had shipped over my 15-year-old cat with me, and I suddenly found myself with a job, I hesitated leaving. The worst decisions of my life, number one, going to New Zealand, and then number two, not leaving New Zealand when I knew the truth. And so I thought tonight we would chat about you did not see that. And all the things I grew up with as a small child, this was a phrase that I heard over and over and over again from the people I, I grew up with, the people I lived with. And why today, at the age of 52, pretty much every bone in my body has been broken. Why? Because, by the, because of the age of five, I had failed to understand that when one of these street thugs, these CIA, U.S. Army intelligence bullies, cowards I was living with, said this key phrase to me, you did not see that. That never happened. I would respond with complete honesty, well, complete stupidity, that, yeah, yes, I, I did see that. At which point, more of my bones would be broken. It's amazing what a small human body can withstand. As a small child, my earliest memories, actually my earliest memory, is of a very large woman with hair like a Brillo pad. A Brillo pad's a bronze scrubbing brush. And she's leaning over me, and I'm laying on the floor, and I'm looking up, and my back is up against a wall in a very, very dark room. And the only light in the room was behind this very large woman's head. And there was sort of a halo effect through her Brillo pad hair. And she was driving her fist into my face over and over again. And you would have thought, even a very small, very stupid, beaten child that I was, 
would have eventually linked the phrase, you did not see that that never happened, with having my bones broken. No, I never never quite got it. Still, still have trouble with it at the age of 52. Now, all of these CIA, U.S. Army intelligence operatives, these, these street thugs, these bullies, all of these gangs were controlled by women. And I've since found that all criminal organizations, government, police agencies, governmental departments, countries, nations, the Western world, are all controlled by women. Women working in the shadows, for the most part. Although you, see, you can find Queen Elizabeth of England and Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands out every day being worshipped by their slaves. But as a rule, uh, the women would work in the background and direct the men to commit their atrocities for them. Street thug gangs, you know, were no different. And even though the men were the connections to the power brokers, the various power brokers between gangs, between countries, the women called the shots. In my particular case, it was the women who broke all my bones. Um, one of them did, the, the brillo-haired uh, woman, um, one time actually ordered her male lovers to gang rape me in, attempt, in an attempt to teach my father a lesson. The joke uh, was, of course, the joke turned out to be on her. My, my father didn't care. And then later, when I was too old to, uh, I guess to, it was, how do I say this? I guess at the age of five, I was no longer fun to torture anymore. And they dumped me in the street and left me to die. You did not see that. That never happened. That's the mantra of our masters. And they use it quite effectively today. So I, from my own experience, I recognize uh, <laughs> that key phrase. As I grew, grew older, I never grew up, as I got older, uh, I discovered by the time I managed to finally flee my captors, I was a whipped dog. I didn't know which way was up, but I knew I had to get away. When I finally fled my captors, my tormentors, at the age of 28 and moved full-time into Hollywood, I, I felt that I was finally free. I was, you know, I was free of their evil. Only to discover that that very same evil was now running the country and was doing it quite openly in the full view of the American people. I, I couldn't believe it. Up until that moment, I was sort of uh, just trying to survive. Uh, that old witch I occasionally mentioned, Alice, would show up in my life, uh, bark some orders at me, and then leave. But other than that, I really had no, no contact with, well, anyone human, I suppose. I was a whipped dog, which is what uh, these street thugs wanted me to be. And I had no idea of the true motivations behind all these activities, uh, both private, my bones being broken, because I did not agree that you did not see that, that never happened. And what the government was now doing in public to the people of the world. You did not see that, that never happened. You lose your job because you know how to do your job. A moron is hired to be your boss who has no experience, no knowledge, and no experience to do the job, but he's gay. So that automatically qualifies him to have a job he doesn't know how to do. You did not see that. That never happened. A moron is hired to run your department, but she has no idea what's going on because she's never had a corporate job in her life. She's never managed a budget, never led a project, never been in charge of people, but she's black. And so that automatically qualifies her for this job. And because she's black and she's female, the corporation who hires her gets an automatic tax credit. The fact that she's destroying the department and making everyone's life a living hell, well, you know, you did not see that. That never happened. We as a people elect a president who was sold to us as the Black Messiah. We are told that he is the reincarnation of Jesus the Christ and that he will save us. He will put free money in our pockets. He will put free gas in our cars. He will stop all wars. He even got a Nobel Peace Prize before even actually being a president. And he will turn the world into a paradise, we're told. He did not do any of those things. 
he actually made the USA worse. He actually followed the ways of the last Jesus who was in the White House, little King George Bush, our last Messiah. And then he took us into two more wars, Pakistan and Libya, but you did not see that. That never happened. And if you should say, yes, yes, I did see that, yes, it did happen, you will find someone knocking on your front door, and then they're going to kick it in. And when you reasonably chase these guys down the street who invaded your home, who attacked you, you'll be arrested. You will go to jail. You will be charged. You will have a record. Because you did not see that. Because that never happened. But it did. And now, at this point in time, my advice? Just keep it to yourself. Trust me, broken bones hurt, even after 50 years. For all of us here at the 2012fad.com, this has been Charlie Bluehawk, wishing you a really good day and reminding you please keep one good thought. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.